There has been a lot of talk in the past years about who is faster, the recumbent or the road bike. And of course, the road bikes are always convinced that they are almost as fast as not even a recumbent, but a Velomobile. And a few years back, they published this video about somebody taking on a Velomobile rider. This is a Milan. It's a very, a very aerodynamic bike or trike, I should say. It has two wheels in the front, one in the rear. And they are comparing that to a very modern road bike. But consider that a woman is pedaling the, the Milan. The road where they are is around. So there's a lot of cornering involved, which is going to cut into acceleration. So this test was really not that fair. The road bike did come in slower, but not by the long shot. But that is because of the environment and because of the difference between the riders. This woman is really not fit and she is a woman too. So she has maybe half the lower body strength of the guy. But even this way, you, you can see that the Velo is a little bit faster. Not by a long shot, but a little bit. There, there have also been a number of videos posted by both the Velomobile crowd and uh, the road bike people claiming that they can do for the road bike I would say 55 miles an hour is the maximum I have seen for a Velomobile I have seen over 60 65 maybe 70 on a good day depending upon how steep the downhill is and keep in mind the Velomobile was really designed for downhill. So long that you have no sharp turns, you can take absolutely unbelievable speeds, go with the cars on main roads like a highway, which is actually legal in some European countries. I believe it is possible to calculate the exact performance difference between an upright bicycle and a recumbent. The most efficient recumbent bicycle is the two-wheel streamliner. It is a recumbent small wheel design. It has 20-inch wheels. It has an enormous chain wheel, practically no space inside. So you are, the rider is completely wrapped around with only a few millimeters of space left anywhere. There's no windshield because even that would reduce the aerodynamics. So what they do is uh, they have a camera and they look out through the camera and it's very, very hard to stir because it's built all for speed. Obviously, this is not something this is not something you could uh, you, you would ever contemplate riding for yourself. The whole thing fits together like a toy bullet. There is a tail and the rest of the cover just snaps into it and it's very hard to stir it. The speed maximum they have achieved so far is 90 miles an hour. I am not aware of anybody who could have done more than that and it's hard to do. So this is not exactly a, a practical bicycle but the same can be said of the current speed record holder which I would say is still the Molten, also fully fared. It is also very aerodynamic and very efficient. And the top speed is a little bit above 50 miles an hour. So if you compare the efficiency of the upright bike and the recumbent, the difference is roughly an 85 to 90% gain if you have a recumbent as opposed to an upright bicycle. That's why it's kind of futile for people who are not professional racers to invest in upright bikes that are extremely light or very rigid because if speed is what you want, there's no way that you can com compare to the performance of a recumbent. There's just no way because it's, the profile is so much lower, even if you make it fully fared. Even a fully fared upright bike is not going to go this fast. There's no way. I am giving you links to all of this material if you want to verify the data for yourself. But currently, the record for an upright bicycle is held by a particular molten bike, fully fared, 
just a little bit above 50 miles. And the record for the recumbent is just around 90. For something that is totally smooth, ultralight, has an enormous chain wheel and you're looking out through a camera. Now if you want to get something for yourself, probably the, the cheapest way to improve your speed, not to the level of a recumbent or even a fully fared Molten, is to get uh, some kind of a fairing to the front. They actually, Zipper sells a front fairing and uh, it's about $500, weighs a few pounds. I'm thinking that even the front bag attachment of the Brompton could take this. It could take this much weight. But of course you, you're not going to get that much of a performance gain, but you will get something. Another option is to actually get a recumbent, something that is available for people on the street. I'm looking at the Toxis ER. This is one of the nicest uh, racing recumbents that you can buy. And it is way cheaper than a Velomobile and will go a lot faster on most terrains except for the uphills than the most upright bicycles. So they do sell a lot of options, which I really like about European bike manufacturers. At this price range, I would add another 1200 just to get a roll of hub. It's actually very cheap to get it from them. They're probably selling it without a markup and maybe another thousand dollars for other things. So you're looking at a little over five thousand dollars. If you want a, a box in the back, nice wheels, better brakes and so on, rear view mirror, I would definitely get the rear box just to be even more, even more streamlined and aerodynamic. But because you can get a roll of hub and you can get uh, a front gear set as well, you can really crank up the speed. You might even want to get the front fairing. So about five thousand five and a half for this one. Then you can get from the lighting, if you want to go a step above the F40, that's this bike. This is fully fared but there are only two wheels so it's lighter with less rolling resistance than a Velomobile trike. A little over $9,000. So it's not cheap but what's really nice about it is it's an upright recumbent and most of it is flexible so you can actually keep this in an apartment. You can remove the front, you can fold up this uh, flexible uh, coating that, that they have and it's it's uh, very easy to pack it away and to carry it even to fly with it. There, they have another bike and that's basically the same thing that's the F90. It's this bike, the same thing but f out of much lighter material so the price is going to be twice as much as the F40. I don't think many people buy these but this is on the market. If you put in the money, they will make one for you, which I think is really nice. I'm not featuring bikes that you cannot buy off the market. And finally, I should mention an Australian company. This Trislet company sells a racing Velomobile for really not a lot of money. It's a three-wheeler, only $7,000. You are fully enclosed, you get an enormous chain wheel, so you can go really fast with this one. But it is fully enclosed, there is a tiny bit of an air inlet. It's great for the winter. In the summertime, you spend an hour in this thing, you're gonna be like a, like a grilled piece of a hot dog, even though there's a bit of a shadow on the top. And this is a racing Velomobile, so it hardly has any ground clearance. You can only use racing tires. So this is not really for the street. This is for environments where you can, uh, you can count on a very clean, silky smooth road, that sort of a thing. They do sell other racing recompense as well, if you have more money. Sort of like the Lightning Company. 
and here the price goes up to 16,000 but it's still not as expensive as the lightning would be although again the problem is that this is not for the street or off-roading touring anything like that I love the way they offer the choice of chain ring all the way up to 90 90 tooth I have a 60 tooth so this is this is several notches above that this is basically all you can do there isn't that much else on the market there are also companies that will make uh, fairings for you and custom recompense are also available but those I'm not featuring because uh, there's no steady price or anything you would have to contact them directly so the conclusion from all this is that if you want to go real fast and you're not looking to go electric the thing to do is definitely to go recumbent because there's not much of anything you can do with an upright bicycle save for maybe putting on some aerodynamic elements and I will talk about those in a, in a future video but there's no way anybody in a regular upright bike is going to beat a recumbent unless it's a comfort recumbent or for touring or whatever long wheelbase but a racing recumbent not to mention a velomobile or a streamliner is going to beat all upright bikes no matter what they do this is it for the current video and I will be back to the aerodynamic topic in another video.